Good afternoon. Welcome to Baiju's exam prep. Welcome to the first of our decision making classes. We're going to have four or five of them. Let me first see if you can see me and hear me clearly. Uh, wait, just give me a second. I hope you all are all ready for the decision making section. Let me just quickly put this on because I lost my chat on my computer. So let me put it here so that I can see. And I hope one of you can see me as well. Give me a thumbs up if you can. All right. You can hear me, see me clearly. Give me a thumbs up. We'll start the session. Yes, no, quick. All right. Okay. Now, as you know, decision making is a unique section for that. Nothing to worry about, but most students get worried about decision making because we haven't done it in CAT. It is a more difficult, a slightly more difficult, a lengthier version of the course of action questions you do in critical reasoning. So it is similar to a critical reasoning question. So nothing to worry about it. All right. Generally, actually, I think decision making, the decision making section, at least they have 21 to 22 questions out of which 10 are very easy. Five are of moderate level. If at all they want to make it difficult, the rest of the questions are difficult. So you can solve them faster than you can solve some of the RC questions. So it's a good section to have and you can get very high marks in decision making if you use your common sense a little. Let us first look at what it tests. There are 18 to 19 questions on HR. So uh, Last year there were 22 questions. So generally the DM section has 21 to 22 questions. Out of which 18 to 19, a majority are HR, business and socio-political issues. Three questions, that is one set, will be based on uh, analytical and numerical logic. You'll have numbers, you have to, but it doesn't involve any great calculation. You know, I am zero with numbers, but sometimes when I look at the number one, I can guess, Achha, isme ye jada hai, ye kam hai. it's actually pretty doable. Unless there are too many variations, then I don't go anywhere near the set. All right. Now, there are multiple choice questions. So you have two types of multiple choice questions. One where only one answer is correct either A, B, C, D or E. One in which they'll say 1 and 2, 2 and 3, okay. Also, you have rank ordering questions. You have to order the options in ascending order or descending order. Remember, descending order means the most effective is first. The best is given first and the least effective is last. Ascending order means the least effective is first and the most effective is at the end. So you need to understand whether they are asking you in ascending order or descending order and you have to answer accordingly. Most questions are easy to moderate. They require common sense. They require basic reasoning skills which all of us have and which we have taught you to we have taught you to think properly. So when if you think properly, you can think a problem through, then it is easy. Now, before we solve past year caselets, remember, when you read a caselet, a caselet can be long or short. Okay, the longer caselets generally have easier questions because you already spend a long time reading it. So as you are reading the caselet, remember, to put all the main points on your fingertips so you know exactly what is the problem what so decision making is essentially problem solving resolve the issue resolve the problem that is given to you there would be options given to you which is the best course of action there would be options given to you what should you do in this case so unless you know what is the problem you cannot solve it so, first thing is to identify the problem, identify the issue at stake, identify the question whose answer you are supposed to give. Alright, 
if it is a problem with somebody who is uh, having lot of private problems personal problems at home which is affecting his official work right so there are two parties involved one your the person involved second you or the case would be the hr manager or the manager there okay now what is the problem here office work has to be done deadlines have to be met at the same time you can't be cruel and inhuman there is a human factor there so you have to look at this is the problem these are the players the person involved and the professional commitments you have as a manager you have to balance the two what is the pro professional commitment deadlines have to be met what is the other problem you have that your you have to also think like a human being as to the person who has who's been ill who's having some problems so how do you balance the two come up with a win win situation which will help you both meeting the deadlines as well as taking care of the person who's ill i know it sounds easy the options will actually let you do that the option which solves the problem so identify the problem the the steps are very simple identify the problem all right identify the problem issue or case at hand that is step number 1 step number 2 identify the main players are there more is there more than one player involved here who are they who are the affected parties that's your other thing identify the players identify the stakeholders come up with the solution which will make everyone happy unless unless you have been asked to take one side and solve it so depending on the question you offer the solution clear all right let's now solve a case let this case is long but there are a lot of factors here that makes it an ideal decision making uh, case a college campus with a population of around 2000 of whom 200 were children okay a college campus has a population of around 2000 of whom 200 were children 1200 people between 15 and 45 years 500 people between 45 and 65 and around 100 people more than 65 years of age so you have a college campus with people of almost all age groups but predominantly children and young adults all right the campus has two big gates opening out to the city there are 400 cars 500 motorbikes inside the campus the residents relied on those vehicles to visit the city located 10 kilometers away so the campus city is located 10 kilometers away and then there are 400 cars and 500 motorbikes in the campus so the people have to commute to the city then they use the cars or motorbike whatever mode of transport so far so good next with the land within the campus becoming scarce the chief administrator has found the growing demand for parking difficult to handle in the campus you have lot of uh, things that you need to take care of but there is a demand for a larger parking lot more and more cars are there this is the problem he has that he, there is a growing demand for parking space the faculty staff and students wanted increased parking space everyone faculty staff students everyone wants more parking space obviously in the past 6 years the parking requirement on the campus has doubled all right that means lot of vehicles are coming all right now what is the problem here 
the ca found it inappropriate to construct parking lots from the students fee even though those with vehicles may not complain about it so one option how does he build a parking lot would he use a part of the students fee he thought yeah maybe those who own vehicles would not mind a little bit of their fees going to the uh, construction of a parking lot but the ca the chief administrator is not very happy about doing that all right besides creating parking parking problems the ca felt that these vehicles added to the pollution and made residents less responsible towards each other now there is a question okay i can i can uh, i can make more parking space available but i need money for that this is the first problem the ca has the chief administrator has the second problem is he is reluctant to do it because more vehicles means more pollution and he also feels that the residents are less responsible towards each other they kind of become a little careless the risk to the children and elderly because of over speeding was menacing so parking if you give more parking say one is the question of where am i going to get the money to create extra parking space second is that if i create extra parking space there is also more vehicles means more pollution more vehicles not only mean more pollution more vehicle also mean a menace because these vehicles are over speeding inside the campus therefore because of these three issues the chief administrator wanted to reduce the number of vehicles in the campus he didn't want so many vehicles coming into the campus many faculty members students and staff members however felt that the demand for more parking space was natural as vehicles were required to commute from the campus which is 50 kilometers away from the city to the market the railway station the airport interstate bus terminal all located in the city they also told the ca that the elderly sick and toddlers relied only on these vehicles so the people uh, who you think are threatened by over speeding of vehicles inside the campus are also the ones who require it most okay this is the problem the chief administrator has after listening to all the stakeholders the ca wanted to solve these problems while ensuring the campus remain responsible and green so what all does he know he has to create parking space all right he has to also keep the campus responsible no over speeding nothing and also keep it green this is his objective all right this is the objective now question which of the following actions would best satisfy all the stakeholders inside the campus so you have students faculty who want uh, administrators who want more parking space the chief administrator is also worried about the elderly the toddlers who are in the campus wants less pollution in the campus wants them to be saved from the over speeding that happens inside the campus also wants to provide parking space but also keep the campus green and responsible so which one would best satisfy all the stakeholders those who want parking space those who want less pollution those who uh, to protect them from pollution and to protect them from over speeding so which one would solve it best question a charge an extra fee on students to construct additional parking okay parking lots inside the campus not tots okay charge the students extra fees to uh, construct extra parking lots inside the campus students should pay for the upkeep of the campus will this work you remember the ca is reluctant to use school the fees student fees for it Because he feels that we we have to give them education, they are paying for the education. Why should they also pay for parking? So some way he feels it's not right. Okay, so he would not probably he would not go for this option. Let all vehicles be parked 
in a college managed space outside the campus so you are you are giving parking space but it is outside the campus so what happens the campus at least is not directly threatened by the pollution of the fumes is not directly threatened by too many vehicles and the problem of speeding two battery operated vehicles handle exigencies emergencies inside or requirements inside the campus seems like a good idea but let's look at the third one bring all stakeholders to the discussion table there is no conflict here they just want parking space it is the chief administrator who wants to do uh, something which would benefit all including the environment so this is not going to help what would discussions do the the staff and the students and the administrators say we want more parking space which is justified so there is no conflict for him to get them to the discussion table nothing is going to happen he the discretion he has the discretion to do something about the parking space to reduce carbon footprints only pooled vehicles should be allowed to operate inside the campus this will help it will reduce the number but how will it help the elderly and the tiny tots who use cars and the, the vehicles inside campus most so it will keep some people at a disadvantage or who cannot cook pool there would be somebody who needs that what would they do if they allow only pulled vehicles then where would that leave tots and the elderly and all such people who use only the campus vehicles so it's not being fair to one section which needs campus vehicles most charge significant fee from any vehicle entering or leaving this campus fine but how does that help the parking problem right if you charge more you'll create you'll get money for uh, any uh, for, for building a parking space but at present the only one which makes most sense is let all vehicles be parked in a college managed space outside the campus and inside the campus you can have battery operated vehicles to take care of any emergency right so answer is option b all right question 2 which of the following would be the best option to now look at the objective what do you need to do what is the problem you have to solve you want to increase revenue which step will help you increase revenue decrease carbon footprint and still satisfy all stakeholders that means have parking space and allow the cars and motorbikes to be operated so which option will take care of all three make substantial collections from vehicles entering or leaving a uh, campus and construct a parking lot outside the campus makes sense so when you have vehicles coming to the campus you charge them a lot so that one you uh, discourage too many vehicles inside the campus and you are they are also paying for any step you are taking to to reduce the carb carbon footprint also it will help with the upkeep of the parking lot outside the campus charge extra fee on the students and build extra parking lots inside the campus one you are burdening the students which is reluctant to do so the students as stakeholders are losing out all right also if you are building it inside the campus you are not going to reduce carbon footprint all right so this will not work bring all stakeholders to the lip, uh, to table and let them build consensus it's your discretion so this is not going to help this the issue has not been uh, gridlocked because of lack of consensus then you will say oh bring them and see if you can get consensus here he has to decide what to do so c is irrelevant to reduce carbon footprint only pooled vehicles will be permitted on campus then you are only satisfying one lot of stakeholders who can pool what about the other more vulnerable lot like the elderly and the children 
Let all vehicles be parked in a managed space outside the campus, while battery-operated vehicles parked at the two gates can be used inside the campus. This will help reduce carbon footprints, but this is not going to bring in any revenue. You are looking at increasing revenue also. Therefore, to increase revenue and also help with the pollution factor, option A is the best answer. You got it? Okay, so that was the case on the college campus and reduction. This is how you eliminate options and achieve your objective, which is what decision making is asking you to do. Let's look at the second caselet, which is a little bit more subjective. Given only one question from here, let's look at the caselet. Let's look at what is the problem in the first place. Genius Consulting is a boutique consulting firm started by Sirish, Balram, Rahman and Xavier, four friends from a premier business school. They committed themselves to abide by two principles not to indulge in anything unethical and share earnings equally. All right, you have four friends from premier business schools who have two principles. Don't do anything unethical. Whatever you earn, share it equally amongst everyone. Genius Consulting could not get a significant project till the following year when he managed a big one after Rahman's father referred their firm to his top management. So one year, they struggled. They didn't get anything. Then the following year, they managed a big contract. But how? One of them, Rahman's father, referred their firm to his top management. Convinced of the team's ta talent, followed by an impressive presentation, the top management awarded them the project even though six other referred teams made presentations. The day following the presentation, they met to decide the way forward for the organization. Do you have the main points at your fingertips? Four, four friends from a premier business school decide to uh, stand by two principles. Do nothing unethical and share all your earnings equally. One year they struggled. Second year they got a big contract after one of them, Rahman's father, referred them to his firm. Now the firm may, was convinced of their talent. They made them do a presentation. Along with them, six others made presentation. But they got the project. These four friends got the project. Now the four friends are... The day following the presentation, the four guys met to decide on the way forward for the organization. Which of the following choices would be the most appropriate for genius consulting? As this project violates both their principles, genius consulting should not take up the project. What do you think? Quickly give me your answers. Due to the violation of the first principle, genius consulting should not take up this project. They should take up the project further since Rahman has agreed to equal sharing. He is not entitled to finder's fee. They should take up the project and as the referral helps them survive, Rahman should be paid finder's fee. They should take up the project but in order not to violate the principles, Rahman can be paid finder's fee this year and an equal amount be deducted from his compensation next year. What do you think is the right answer? Quickly give me your answers. A, B, C, D or E. Quickly give me your answers. Which is the right answer? Is it A? As this project violates their principles, does the project violate their principles? See what has happened. Rahman's father referred them to his firm. Now, is reference unethical? That's the first point. You say, oh, I know someone who's good. Why don't you consider him for the project? What is unethical in reference? Is reference unethical? They decided not to, not to do anything unethical. But referring somebody you know who's good at the job, who's most suitable for the job, or who you think is best for the job, is it unethical? All right. So the project need not violate because reference is not unethical. 
So A is wrong. Due to the violation of the first principle, it should not take up this project. Same thing. Not correct. They should take up the project. Further, since Rahman has agreed to equal sharing, he is not entitled to finder's fees that they get. Is that the same as finder's fee? Here we have an assumption. Earnings and finder's fees. Are fi if finder's fee is included in the earnings, it's a different thing. But finder's fee, you're going and seeking a project. Is that a part of your earnings? That's the next question. If you think it's not, then this is also wrong. They should take up the project and as the referral helped them survive, he should be paid the finder's fee. Whatever you earn from the project, that will be divided equally. But here they got a big project thanks to him. So it's only fair that he get it. Reference is not unethical. So in my view, D is the right answer. Now this doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense at all. Why cut it this year and say, okay, next? why give it this year and say, we'll cut it from your compensation next year. Doesn't work. Therefore, the correct answer is D. None of you answered in time. All right. Let's look at the next case. Please give your answers quickly. All right. The moment I am discussing the options, reading them out, please give your answers. All right. Okay. Let's look at the next case. Mrs. Biswas was to retire in one year after serving in the construction department of the Gujarat government for more than 30 years. All right, so she works with the Gujarat government. She worked with the Gujarat government for more than 30 years and she's, uh, she's due to retire. After retirement, so she is to retire in one year. After retirement, she wanted to spend her retired life with Mr. Biswas, a retired school teacher in a small town in Kerala. They had two children, both studying in Bangalore. The Biswasas wished to construct a house in Kerala with their life savings. The couple gathered information about owning a house in Kerala. So you have this couple. Uh, Mr. Biswas is a retired school chit. Get a local unregistered contractor to construct a house and furnish it. Mr. Biswas wishes inputs from the family. So he could supervise the construction of a house back in Kerala by employing the best material, engineers, masons and laborers. Four options are there. Fully furnished house, big developer. Semi-furnished house, furnish the other half. Get an unregistered contractor and construct a house and furnish it. Do everything from scratch uh, on the basis of, the, of an unregistered contractor. Last one. Get inputs from the family, you can supervise with the best inputs that you get. Get the best material, get the best engineers, masons and laborers. Clear? Okay. Which option would ensure the best control of quality of construction? Quality of construction would require role of quality. The first option, first option is big developer and fully furnished. No, how would you know they've already done it? How would you have control on the quality of construction? Second, second option. Second option is big developer and semi-furnished. You only have control over the second part of the furnishing. You don't have control over the quality of the house, the material with which the house has been built. Nothing. Even half of the furnishing is done. The third option is unregistered contractor, local contractor. How would you know what that local contractor would do? Okay, you just are uh, relying on him to build it. Fourth option, the inputs from family. Somebody would give you input on where to get the best material from, somebody where to get the best masons from, somebody on where to get the best contractor from. So the best option for highest quality would obviously be D. Now the problem with this kind of question is you have to go back to the options given and keep looking. So if you remember the options, it's easier and faster. All right, next question. Which following additional information, if true, 
would improve the chances of the third option being preferred. Now we are choosing the fourth option because you are getting inputs on best, uh, best material, best masons, best whatever, all, everything. And then based on that, you are supervising the construction. What is the third option? Give it to the local contractor. Okay. And to build it and then you furnish it yourself. Now, question is asking which would make the local contractor option the preferred option. If he is a good guy, known for his efficiency, known for his uh, quality of work, and quality of material that he uses, correct? So, based on the uh, uh, current information, with no additional information, the third option is the best. No, third option is not the best because you need additional information. Otherwise, you don't know anything about the local contractor. Among local property holders, the contractor in the third option enjoys a good reputation. There are uh, people who built houses and they said this guy has a good reputation. So you at least would say that he would do good work and you'll get good quality house constructed by him. B is good. Changes in design is irrelevant. Cannot stay back to supervise. Only makes the fourth option less desirable. Right? And uh, uh, this would add to the furniture but the basic quality of construction b is the best All right okay now look at this the kerala government recently announced a policy in case of major quality infringement the builder will pay a penalty of 50 percent of the price of the house in addition to the price of the house to the client within a year of notice all right rank in ascending order the options that would ensure control of quality. Ascending order leads less to more. Which one ensures most oh, quality, best quality is last. Least quality is first. Therefore, which one? What is a developer? Big developer, some amount of quality they have, right? Uh, same big developer, so there's actually not much difference between A and B. Big developer, so here you have control over uh, f half of the furnishing. So big developer, you have no control, but at least the big developers have some sort of a, a name and quality. All right, B and A would being in the last doesn't make sense. Okay, if B is effective, B and A can happen together at least. So C. Why? Because you don't know anything. Uh, what was the option C again? Let's look at it. Our option C was get a local unregistered contractor. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So local unregistered contractor, you don't know anything without that additional information. Next is big developer, both A and B. One is full furnishing, in B you have a little more control. The best, the one that ensures best quality is when you yourself uh, choose, choose who works for you on the basis of inputs on the quality of that person. Here it's input only about the contractor. Here it's different inputs on every part of the construction. Therefore, C, A, B, D. D being the most effective, C being the least effective. All right, that's the answer. Clear? All right. One more case and then we are done. I want answers to come in faster. All right. Uh, you must have seen variations of this case. Many times in ZAT this has come. Many times in critical reasoning questions such cases are given. A pastor had eaten at a restaurant. A member of uh, the church had eaten at a restaurant with his troop of 10 and his family. So a huge group went and ate in a restaurant. It's a norm to tip the waiter and about 20% of a waiter's salary comes from these tips. However, while paying the bill, the pastor crossed out the automatic 18% trip charged for parties of more than 8. So, they have this policy of 18% or more 
for large parties parties of more than 8 he crossed it out and what did he write he write that i give god 10% why do you get 18% and he wrote this above his signature the chagrined waitress of this was upset at the restaurant and she posted a photo of this on the social media this is what this guy did she was subsequently fired for violating the company's policy on customer privacy you shouldn't do it you your the customer's privacy has to be maintained at all time here you've taken a picture and you put it on social media you infringed you violated his privacy rights and therefore they uh, fired the waitress for doing for this action of posting that uh, on the social media this would have been understandable okay fine you have a policy you followed a policy then a uh, customer privacy is of utmost uh, importance you should not post what a customer has written on social media would have been understandable if the restaurant had not had not posted just two weeks ago a customer receipt here she posted the customer receipt with the comment that why should i pay you 18 when i pay only god only 10% but two weeks ago the restaurant had posted a customer receipt that was complimenting them okay so you are doing it when it's a compliment when it is something like this you fired a waitress so that shows your double standard so social media and social activists came heavily upon the management's ambivalent stand and the firing of the waitress when you could post that what is wrong if she posted right if may be wrong then neither should have posted it so your stand is ambivalent it is ambiguous it is not clear and firing the waitress did a note on their social media defending their actions this quickly drew over 10000 comments mostly negative to which the management started responding by posting the same note over and over again there were also accusations of the company deleting negative comments and blocking users so all this was done by the restaurant the restaurant also experienced a sizable drop in the footfall so people came to know about all this controversy they probably stopped going to the restaurant so there was a drop in the footfall question 1 of the case let who or what is the main cause for the situation becoming unmanageable where do, where do you think what is the root cause of the situation spiraling almost out of control the pastor for flouting the norm of the restaurant the waitress for violating customer privacy the management for not taking action against the pastor can the management do that the management for giving out disproportionate punishment to the waitress or the management for removing negative comments from the social media is it the pastor for flouting the norms and the waiter waitress for uh, violating customer privacy no when they did that that was the action the management's response they could have handled it better therefore the correct answer is d they should have handled it better they should have done it in such a way that the waitress would not at least let her off with a warning all right or do something else so when they did this people said that gave rise that you are doing social media but you did you 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 are posting compliments customer receipt which customer praised you but you are not uh, allowing a waitress to to post something to show her displeasure so your stand has been ambiguous so their double standards is what irritated the public therefore the management's response in firing the waitress was the root cause of the entire problem all right next question the downward spiral continued for the restaurant as the management persisted in defending their actions and argued with those who criticized them by the following week the original post had generated over 18000 negative comments which of the following is the best way forward for the restaurant what should it do how should it resolve this entire problem it can't go on right so how will it resolve this issue look at the answer options unconditionally restore the waitress to to her former position and salary on the ground that she was never at fault in the first place wrong because she was at fault about customer privacy 
right? So she was at fault. So you can't unconditionally restore the waitress to her original position. She would do it again and again, you have a problem. So A is wrong. Apologize to and reinstate the waitress and ask her to apologize for her breach of customer privacy and post both the apologies on the social media. Apologize to her that look the action we took was wrong. Come back. But you did breach customer privacy. So you need to apologize for your breach of customer privacy. And post both these apologies on the social media. Your apology is where you are accepting your mistake. And the second apology is where the waitress accepts her mistake and the UUD is mistake. Therefore, B seems a good answer. Let's look at that. Reinstate the waitress provided she apologizes for her breach of customer privacy and post that apology on the restaurant social media. Here, you're only doing one part. You're not accepting your mistake. So, this doesn't work. Reinstate the waitress if and only if she apologizes and post that apology. Again, the same thing. Recruit two waitresses at a higher wage, but stick to the, how will it affect, you lose even more. How will that increase uh, or, or bring back customers? It won't. So the correct answer is obviously B. All right. Did, did you see that decision making requires a little bit of thinking, a little bit of analysis, the most important part of decision making is to understand what is the problem about which you are being asked to make a decision. Once you understand it, it becomes easy. Identify the problem first. Find an option which solves the problem. The wrong options would be irrelevant or would not address the problem that is being asked. Alright, now we have lots of courses on CAT and non-CAT uh, courses. Take a free trial so that you know about our pedagogy, about our courses. We have a lot of test series with mocks and topic tests and section tests. Join that, enroll in our courses to get access to our test series. Talk to our counselors, find out which one is the best course suitable for you, long term, short term, when should I join, what should I do. Everything the counselors will tell you. What are the different packages by Jews offer so that you can take any one of them that is most suitable to you. Uh, percentile predictor, score predictor, all are available on our website. Don't forget to join us on 7th January for ZAC 2024 First Impressions and Detailed Analysis. All those who are taking ZAT and attending this session, sec this is a very important session for you. You will know how you have done. And more importantly, if it turns out to be a tough test, the first impressions will make you feel better. That look, the test was tough, so I still have a chance. That's what first impressions help you do. These are our 22 toppers. We are compiling a list of our 23 toppers, which will come out very soon. Join us on our social media channel so that you are updated on the latest in our courses and sessions on the YT and app. Alright, I will see you again very soon. Actually, I'll see you this evening at 7 p.m. as part of at 8 p.m. instead of 7. Uh, note the time. Join our snap analysis today and at 8 p.m. I'll join you for uh, that crash course we will be talking about. Uh, grammar and vocabulary in that. Alright, I will see you then. Until then, bye-bye and thank you.